Building Brains. It's alive! Give my creation life! It's the stuff of science fiction. Or is it? When you tell people that you grow brains, how do people usually react? I guess the curiosity, you know, what, what does that mean and uh, what have you done and what can I learn from it? Professor David Kaplan and his team at Tufts University School of Engineering are growing miniature brains in tiny silk scaffolds and keeping them alive for several months. They're only about a centimeter long, yet Kaplan's brains contain millions of neurons that send signals to each other, just like our own brains do. And so you simply want to create an environment where those cells will cooperate and do what you want to do. So growing a brain can help to understand how our brains work? Well, that's the whole idea. You clearly can't do brain-related research on uh, you know, active, healthy humans. It's just not going to be viable. Uh, and so you're left with some limited cell culture and other related techniques that have a lot of limitation. The human brain is incredibly complex. It has an estimated 86 billion neurons, and they are wired together in trillions of connections. Only by understanding those connections can scientists really learn how the brain works. This is both where the, the function derives and where the complexity originates, and these are things we really don't understand well enough. This would be the side of our donut. This donut model. Explain the model and how our brains are actually put together. The ring of the donut is where we created the right mechanics to host the cortical neurons. In the center, we fill with a very soft gel. And the idea is if those neurons on the outer ring are an environment that they feel is brain-like, they should want to start to do the work and send out their own projections and find their partners in the middle of that gel. You don't want the scaffold itself to cause the cells to be signaled the wrong way. And so silk is very attractive for that because silk has no cell-specific chemistry. To build a brain, researchers in the lab have to make a donut-shaped scaffolding out of silk. We have now whole cocoons with the insect inside. We need to cut it to keep them as small as possible. I didn't think making a brain would feel like a cooking show. Ah, uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Step one is to liquefy the silk. Liquid silk? Yeah. Did it take you long to learn how to make a brain with silk? I mean... No, no, not really. It's just a brain. After more steps that span several days... It's like really kitchen. <laughs> the silk is finally ready. You're making the donut now. Yes, right now I'm making the donut. And here's our donut. Our future brain. Yeah, mini brain. <laughs> For now, they're investigating how the mini-brains respond to drugs and concussion-like injuries. But a grander ambition is not out of reach. I mean, some people have said that if you just get together enough neurons interconnected, things are going to emerge out of it. Maybe not consciousness, but, you know, higher level functions. I mean, do you think if you plug enough of these mini-brains together, you're going to get something that you didn't have before? Yes, I actually believe we can train or build in higher level functions. What that really means is difficult to say at this point because getting to something as complex as the true brain is, is probably out of the realm of possibility at least in the next 10 years. But one thing we can offer is the ability to keep these things growing and maintain for long periods of time. And then who knows what we'll find.